With the first quarter of the new season now complete and the second international break of the season is now on the horizon, I figured I'd take the time to reflect on what's been a pretty good start for Chelsea despite the injuries, despite, you know, the unknown, right? New manager, new new regime. This is a video that's dedicated to, to shed some positive light which seems to be a season that we are finally, finally laying some groundwork of a new project. Now we are currently in fifth. Wait a minute. Where's Man United? Where, where, where's Tottenham? Where's tight? Where's Man United? Where's Tottenham, man? Oh shit! There's Tottenham in ninth, right behind West Ham. Where's Man? Right behind Sheffield. Oh, that's Man United, not Sheffield United. That's Man United. Holy shit! There these lot are. I mean, my goodness, bro. I mean, everybody said, oh, Chelsea is having a, having a transfer ban. You know, we're going to be the laughing stock, especially after we lost 4-0 to Man United. If anybody with, with football knowledge watched that game, could have seen this coming, right? This game, that game was an anomaly, right? We dominated that game. A lot of a lot of things since then have been corrected. We no longer can see goals on a counterattack nearly as much as we did in the beginning of the season. So that's a drastic improvement. Um, one thing is still annoyance, annoyance is the set pieces. But it appeared last game, right, I seen a, I seen a tweak in the new style of zonal marking. I guess it's a mixture of zonal and man marking against uh, Southampton. I've seen it. Uh, maybe this is a different style. Like I said, I don't, I don't like this Chelsea squad does not need to be zonal marking, but what I seen in last game was a tweak in it to where, you know, we had some players man marking and he had some players covering zonal areas, right? So I guess that's okay. We didn't concede anything for set pieces, even though, you know, there are times of the game where we could have, especially with James Ward-Prowse with his delivery, but we didn't. We conceded a silly goal that shouldn't have been allowed. I seen a lot of people saying it was Tamori fault. I'm not going to blame Tamori for that. You know, a lot of reasons. It's all about positioning and midfielders have to give always have to give the defenders passing options or else you know things like that are gonna happen, right? He has no options, he's gonna give the ball to because he, he doesn't have anybody to pass the ball to. And we're a team, we're not Burnley, we're not going to sit and hoof the ball up the field every time. I understand that's the number one protocol. If you're in doubt, clear it out, right? That's what we're taught uh, taught as you know, schoolboys. That's the last thing that you do. Right, if you don't know what to do with the ball, just get it forward, hoof it forward. But we're not Burnley. We have a system. We have a philosophy. We want to play through the back. And when your midfielders and wingers aren't dropping back deep to receive the ball, to offer that passing outlet that puts your defenders in a, a heap of trouble when you're a team that likes to play from the back. So I think it was a team thing for uh, some of those mistakes from Tamori, right? And that goal, like I said, I'm not going to blame Tamori or Alonso because both of those players have really good games, especially Alonso. He shocked me. He surprised me last game. He really had a good game last game. So kudos to Alonzo. Let's keep it up. Emerson to be back soon and Rudiger after the international break, which is which is great for us because the international break twice in a row now has come in the perfect time. Even though I want to keep playing because we were playing great, fantastic football, right? So anyways, I know Tottenham. I know Man United are a bit hurt, but guess what, Man United? Good news, bro. Well, listen, all they've got, to, Man United might not thank me, but get the contract out, put it on the table, yeah. let him sign it, let him write whatever numbers he wants to put on there, given what he's done now since he's come in, and let him sign the contract and go. Ollie's at the wheel, man, he's doing it, he's doing his thing. Man United are back. <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, bro, that's forever funny. That is forever funny, bro. Oh my goodness, bro. But back to a more serious note. The amount of team spirit that I've seen from this Chelsea squad, bro, I haven't seen this in such a long time. And just the aura that Lampard and his staff have brought to this Chelsea club, it's, 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 not toxic. it's not as toxic as it used to be, especially on Twitter. It seems like there's a perfect harmony in, in the Chelsea fan base that I haven't seen in a long, long time. Like, for the past few years now, it's, it's been a split between the fan base and it's been growing and growing, especially last season with Sorry and you know, if you are a Sorry and you are a salt coat, coat part of the Sorry coat or whatever. If you are Sorry out, you are just 
you know, dumb and didn't know, you know, just all different types of opinions flying at each other instead of remembering that we're all Chelsea fans, even though we have different uh, beliefs and, and philosophies in football, we're still Chelsea fans and we just want the best from our club, right? But this season, this season alone, the amount of support, players are even coming, players are even greeting after the game now, away fans, which is fantastic. Last season, when we lost the game at away or, you know, we didn't have the best performances, the, the players were quick to go out and, and, and leave the pitch. They didn't even, you know, show, show the support acknowledge the fans for coming and traveling to go see them, you know, especially to, for the fans that went to Baku, right? You know, this is not our club that I'm talking about right now. I'm talking about Arsenal at this moment when I'm talking about Baku. You know, people are traveling all the way around, you know, have to spend lots and lots of money and then witness them get slaughtered by the greatest club in London, Chelsea, and the players immediately try to run out and, and not greet the away fans. I think they didn't. You know, spent all their hard-earned money to come and support the club, support the team when it was almost impossible, right? For any normal person, it's probably impossible to go spend loads of money and travel to Baku to go watch your team play. But some people managed to do so, right? So it's important that these players continue to, you know, acknowledge their away fans and acknowledge the support that they get because we are we as fans, we go out of our way to support our club that we love. And this is something I love to see. Fantastic, man. Fantastic. Lampard has done a great job with this team, and we have a foundation. We have a philosophy. I go back to the other structures and the other clubs that are struggling, right? Like Man United, they don't seem to know what they want to do, right? We don't know who makes the decisions at Man United. We don't know what they what their what project is, what they're working on. They said they have a three-year plan, but what is that plan, right? Chelsea have told us as as a as a fan base that we're look this is what we're doing we're going to take the transfer ban right we're going to look at our youth see what we have and we're going to develop that talent we're going to give them the platform to grow and develop as young men and young players and we, we're going to trust in them we're going to back them and yeah that's 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 pretty much our philosophy right give these youth players a chance have a mixture of youth and veterans and let's try to let's try to be competitive right and then once this transfer ban is served, then we can, you know, see what, what gaps we need to fill, where, what positions we need to strengthen, right? That's sort of where we're at as a club. But other clubs like Man United, Arsenal, we don't know what their plan is. Some ownerships, like, I, I feel, I'm glad that Mr. Abramovich is our owner because you look at Arsenal and, and Man United, they have shitty owners, bro, and Newcastle, right? They don't give a shit about the fans as long as they're making their money and whatnot, we have an owner and a board that really does want the best for Chelsea, you know? And it's nice that former players like Petr Cech and Jody Morris and Lampard and his staff, they really do care about the club and they want the best for the club and they're doing that, right? And every time, this is one thing I love about Lampard, he acknowledges things that we, he, that we acknowledge. Like for example, in a video I said that Kepa needs to be more vocal when it comes to set pieces and everything else, right? Be more vocal. And in a press conference, what did Lampard say? He would like to see Kepa be more vocal. You know, just little things like that, right? And he never he never leaves us in limbo, which was a big problem I had with Chelsea, right? In the past few years, it seems like the board waits to the last minute to tell us things. Like before Lampard even got hired, we had to list, we had to go to Derby County's website to find out the latest news about Lampard, right? There's no reason for a club to keep their fans in limbo. Let us know what are you doing so we can get behind you and, and understand what you, what are you trying to do instead of us believing that you're taking us for granted, right? Lampard has come in and, and, and he's established a relationship with the fan base, well, reestablished, and he never left us, right? He, we, we love Frank Lampard, Super Frankie, right? But he's got a connection with the fans, and he uh, he addresses the fans. We wanted to know what, me personally, we wanted to know where Pulisic, why wasn't he getting playing time, and he's told us that, right? This is why I love Lampard, right? I asked him for an answer, even though he, he doesn't, doesn't know me personally, obviously, but he heard the noise about where's Pulisic, where's Pulisic. He told us, wait, just wait, guys. He's only 21 years of age. He's already started five or six games for us. He's a young player. He's adapting to a new culture. Just give him time. 
that tells me, okay, I do have a plan for Pulisic. Right now, it's, it's very competitive. I have a lot of competition in, in those spots. Right now, we're going to let him slowly settle into the new culture, the new way of playing, um, and adapt to, to, the, to the Premier League, right? Sort of like a red shirt year. And I'm okay with that. He's told me his plans with Pulisic. He's told me that, look, I understand you want to see him playing. I know the price tag says he should play, but let's forget the price tag. It's 21 years old. Give him time. Give us time to work with the player and trust in us, right? And, that, and I'm cool with that. But that's just a little video. I don't want to make this video too long. But Lampard, man, I believe in your, I believe in your football, your way of playing, and I believe in the Chelsea board now that we have more football minds at that level with check as a technical director or technical whatever his uh, special role is right he's that glue he's that he's that middleman between the manager and the board and i love that you know macalela has come back come back as well actually cole seems like he's working on his licenses to be a, a staff member of some sorts so i'm really 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 happy that we above all the other rivals we have a set plan in place and we know where we're going. We have a sense of direction, right? We trust in our young players. These players didn't cost us a penny. And we're out here fifth place. And I believe personally that we're going to comfortably, comfortably finish third or fourth, barring injury, right? Because I look at other teams and our form is only getting better. We, we cut out some of our, you know, problems earlier in the season. We're slowly adapting. We're, we're young. We're going to make mistakes. But overall, we've been playing really, really solid. And I love the team spirit, that Chelsea spirit. It means so much, man. Anyways, up the Chelsea. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And let's let's go uh, you know, get Newcastle when the international break is over with. Up the Chelsea, and I'm out.